The Queen handing over patronages is a small announcement that paints a bigger picture, just don't expect an abdication. The announcement by Buckingham Palace that the Queen is handing over some of her patronages is the latest in a trickle of small-scale decisions that paint a bigger picture. Presented by itself, it is easy to talk down the significance, around 5% of her many patronages to be passed on to younger royals. But the move is one that will, rightly, attract attention as part of a wider plan that is best summed up by that slightly clunky but highly appropriate term transition. But, first things first, and let's get this out of the way immediately, the Queen is not, and will not ever, abdicate. She pledged to serve her whole life and she sure as anything meant it so I, along with anyone who knows even the tiniest thing about the royals, will roll my eyes at anyone who asks about the A word. But change, albeit gradual, is definitely afoot. And it's not really surprising because, come on, the Queen is 90. She has the best health care going, but that doesn't make anyone immune to the aging process. She simply cannot physically do what she did at 50, 70 or even 80 and, quite frankly, it's ridiculous that anyone would expect she could. But she is the head of state, and that has presented a conundrum for palace courtiers, from whom I have often sensed a reluctance to discuss the concept of slowing down when it comes to the aging monarch. Part of this reluctance comes from, I suspect, a feeling that to acknowledge slowing down might somehow suggest lessening commitment. It would trouble the Queen deeply if she thought anyone perceived her commitment to her position was dwindling. And it isn't. But, unlike most people, she will never retire. And so doing a little bit less and getting a helping hand is the only viable alternative. We are now faced with the reality that our head of state is going to be looking more and more to members of her family to support her official duties and to physically represent her at events as the years go on. Following an announcement in May 2013, the Queen no longer does long-haul travel, meaning the 15 realms apart from the UK where she is also head of state including Canada, Australia, and New Zealand will not see her set foot on their shores again. Some of her domestic duties such as investitures have also been handed over to her children and grandchildren, with Prince William now a regular on the medal awarding scene. And images such as the one released by Buckingham Palace a few days ago of the Queen alongside heir Prince Charles send the message that we should perhaps all be thinking about the day, although it could be more than a decade away, when the baton is fully passed on. But until then we can expect more of this. A series of little announcements gradually adapting to the changing landscape surrounding our aging monarch. With the transition in full swing we can expect to see Prince Charles, his wife and his children taking on more, or certainly more prominent, duties. And it is inevitable that, over time, the Queen will do less. But it will be gradual, as, let's face it, the Queen has always favored a more measured and steady style over sudden change or a knee-jerk reaction. And many would say that. Over almost 65 years, that's exactly what has served her, and us, well.